Hi, Angelina. You came just on time. I was literally just saying we're going to wait, give it a, a minute or two. And so here you are. We were just waiting Hello. for you. We were waiting just for you. Oh, um, sorry. No, sorry. Please. It's all good. It's good to see everyone. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. You? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Okay, just a heads up, this is being recorded. Do any of us have a problem with that being recorded? Amazing. Um, I wanted to welcome you all to my very first webinar. This is my first webinar that I've been doing ever in my life. Um, I didn't sleep a lot last night, and this was really scary for me, even though like literally everyone who's here is just humans that I love. And I'm so grateful that you've shown up. And um, I tried memorizing an hour's worth of, of talking. And then I realized what is going into the unknown, if not just let it be and see what comes and see what goes and see what shows up. So honestly, that's what's here. And that is what I'm offering. So I originally this idea came from, I had a session with, Sheila Masan, and she said, and I was like, Sheila, what should I do with my life? And she said, well, how about you figure it out just by seeing what comes up? And that was how this came up. That was literally how this came up by just going and seeing, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Well then just go in, not knowing what you're doing. Um, so that was how this came to be. And I'm really excited to present it to you. This is just a little snippet of I have no idea where or I have no idea what it will lead to so I'm excited I just like to say a quick little prayer before I start anything that is projected to other people that I just am I'm able to empty my mind of all self uh noise so that I can be a vessel to receive and give over whatever it is that the people that are listening need to hear Okay, so let's dump, let's just dive right in. Um, we are going to be exploring the unknown. It's exciting. It's scary. It's this world that is just a vast opening. So we will be, here's our quick snippet. We're going to start off um, discovering limitless possibilities, the nature of the unknown. What is it? What does it mean to embrace the unknown? And the rest you can just look in for yourselves, see what we've discussed. And um, obviously I'm not going to disclose it all right up front. Uh, the unknown, it's, it's huge, it's huge, it's scary. Um, I think as children, we all start off amazingly curious with life. We start off, the unknown is this amazing thing. If we look at babies, we look at children, they're just, Anything unknown is exciting to them. And we look at adults and things that are unknown. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, I, I don't know. It's scary. It's scary. And you give children a spatula for crying out loud. Give them a spatula. They'll look at it. They'll lick it. They'll bend it. It's so exciting. And like, if we get something that we don't know what it is, for me, I was always like, how's it going to hurt me? What? what why is this supposed to hurt me and this is just what my my brain tells me it's like no it's bad I don't know it's bad but like let's be real in essence everything that we do and be and are in life is potentially unknown we think we know we think we know what tomorrow will bring we think we know that when I have a snack, I'm gonna feel full. But did you ever have a snack and not feel full? Did you ever think that tomorrow will bring maybe doomsday and then all of a sudden it was the best day ever? So, so what is all of this I'm gonna know and then I'm scared, right? All of the unknown is just me being scared of what I really already know what I think I know, to be fair. Um, this was a quote that I saw by Teal Swan many, many years ago, actually, and it really hit home, where she says, we don't actually fear the unknown, we fear what we think we know about the unknown, right? And 
for the first time, I wouldn't say it's the first time that I was uh, exposed to the unknown, but it was one of the uh, probably most substantial times that the unknown became something that I was just hungry for was actually when I met, uh, we all know here, I met Hannah Studley probably about seven or eight years back. And I had been to uh, a meetup. We were all just kind of meeting up. And I approached her because she seemed like a sane woman. And I said, can you help me? And she said to me, um, maybe. I said, okay, what, you know, how, how do you think you can help me? She said, are you ready to do anything I tell you to do? And I said, well, what's in it for me, right? And she says, what's in it for you is that I can guarantee you, she's giving me a guarantee here, that your life will be different. I cannot tell you it will be better. I cannot tell you it will be worse, but it will be different than what you know today. That to me was music to my ears. Music to my ears was giving me something other than what I know to be true today. Give me something unknown. Give me a promise that's not what I know. I was just so hungry for change. I had just been released from the psych ward. I was done. I was toast. I hated life. I hated everything about where I was and who I was. And I just wanted a way out of what I knew. And that was it. And they said, I'm in. I, I you know, if, if there was a contract to be contracted, I was in. I didn't actually sign a contract, but I was in. I just said, you know, take me, show me, tell me I am doing it. And literally that was the beginning of my thirst and curiosity and exposure to recognizing that there is so much that I don't know that I want to get a handle on. And, and that was, and that was really my journey. And I, I slowly started following blindly following literally just blindly. I trusted, I, I wanted something different. So I didn't care what would come to be. Um, and that was it. And that was when I started. And, and that was my slowly, slowly, my journey of uh, getting my life back together and getting my love for life and getting my, my curiosity for growth. Um, and it's interesting because Cindy Banks, who I know Angelina and Louise know, I'm not sure if uh, if Elia no, knows about him. I know you've definitely heard me mention him, but he speaks so often about embracing the unknown and not being afraid to explore it. And he believes he he honestly believed, and this is was my own experience that the unknown holds the key to our innate wisdom, creativity, and potential. And by staying open and curious, we can tap into this this wisdom and live more fulfilling, joyful lives which honestly has been my experience of tapping into the unknown. And I, I believe it was my innate wisdom that told me, just follow Hana, whatever she says. And um, since then, it's been a journey. It's been an exciting journey. It's been fun. So what does it actually mean to embrace the unknown? Well, okay, let's start with a little quick activity. I just, I just popped into my head. Okay. Take a deep breath wherever you are. We're in the present moment. We're right here, right now. Just take a deep breath. Close your eyes and imagine a room. A room that you're familiar with. It could be your bedroom. It could be your living room. Um, a room that gives you a nice feeling. Imagine the furniture. Notice it. Notice the paint on the wall. Notice whatever is in that room that provides that warm nice, comfortable feeling. Now, out of the corner of your eye, you notice a door appear in the room that was never there before. It's just a door. Approach the door, open it, see where it leads, see what it is, see what comes up. Come back into our room. I notice how the room maybe changed in our mind. Maybe it created a different feeling. I don't know. I invite you to open your eyes.
And if one of you wants to share what the room looks like, what the room feels like, did it change? Did all of a sudden having a different doorway or having a different- It feels like, it feels like there's a mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To it's, me. Where are you? How come I can't see you? Oh, there you are. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Angelina. Hello, Louise. Hello. Who is with your name over there? I don't know. His, na his name is Elia. <laughs> Hello. It feels like it feels like a mystery. Can you tell me a little bit more about that mystery? Yeah, because did did you say that um, we close our eyes and we see a door that was not there before, right? Yeah. Okay. So to me. I've opened the door uh, and it was dark. I could not see anything there. Uh, so, and then you said, well, come back. And how does the room feels like? Uh, it feels like uh, a mystery <laughs> to me. <laughs> amazing, amazing. A mystery is amazing. If that's, and that's what comes up and that's, that's amazing. Because all of a sudden, when we have something that's so familiar to us and we just change it a little, we get curious again. This room, I haven't changed the room. Maybe a bit, the picture of the room has changed in your head, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the power of the unknown. The power of the unknown is to take what we already know and just give it a new, maybe mystery, like you said, maybe a new opportunity or just something different than what we already know. Mm -hmm. And as I said previously, I, I, this quote that's that's written here on the uh, on the screen again, very similar to the quote by Teal Swan. We're not actually afraid of the unknown. What we're afraid of is letting go of the known. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If if I. I think I know what's going to be, and that's what I'm afraid of, right? Very often, that's all this, 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 um, the book Thinking Grow Rich talks about it a lot, Napoleon Hill, and a lot of this uh, manifestation that people talk about, all of that is happening here. All of that comes straight back to Sidney Banks' teachings, where it's all happening in the mind. It's all happening in thought. Our consciousness is what allows us to really notice our level of thinking, our level of thought. But it's all, all the magic of life happens and unfolds in our mind and in our thought. So when we embrace the unknown and we bring our attention back to the present moment, and we focus on what we can control, which isn't very much, to be fair, right? It's not very much that we can actually control. But we focus, what we can control is being present. What we can control is noticing. That's really a huge part of what is in our hands. And when we notice, just notice our fear. Just notice that we're trying to control everything. Just notice that we're scared of letting go of what we know. Just notice what is. Come back to the present moment. Come back here. And get curious again. Get curious about what's going to come up. Get curious about what's going to unfold. When we learn to just observe our thoughts and recognize them for what they are, just a thought, we can come back and, and really embracing the unknown becomes something almost I, I, it give, when I talk about embracing the unknown it gives me this overwhelming feeling of awe I I feel like I'm like a child walking into Disneyland we're going on a trip tomorrow I have no idea what Disneyland holds and I am just going to whew, like who knows it's just a magical land Disneyland is just magical and that is the world we live in Disneyland is just a metaphor for this huge, amazing world we live in. We live in magic. 
magic is okay magic maybe mystery or mysticalness but that is honestly where we live and through embracing the unknown and embracing just our thinking about it and just letting it be learning to let go of our fears and we just approach what is with an open mind and an open heart like the children i discussed earlier like a child the opportunities and the possibilities just unfold before us watch kids play they come up with the most creative amazing games from nothing from absolutely nothing because they're not afraid because they're fully present and that's really really when i think of like the unknown i just see a free child that's where i want to be honestly just a heads up i i created this webinar because like i said my, i mentioned earlier i want to know more about the unknown these are i like a lot of what i'm saying is um i'm saying mostly to myself so if like anybody gets something out of this this is great but i am very much saying this to myself i'm not preaching from a place of oh i live in the unknown in this graceful beautiful hubba jubba world I'm just giving a heads up, I don't. I am scared of the unknown at times and I don't embrace it at times. And I get really, really, really scared and I stay still and I say, no, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. So I just wanna give a heads up before I get all, like, I don't mean to be preachy um, because like I said, I am preaching to my own choir <laughs> and that is me. <laughs> so and this is just all things that I use to tell myself when I actually, want to really uncover the power of the unknown and and tap into the possibilities so what happens when we let go look at the kids look at the kids just look at that just look as an adult doing that they're just looking around like when i do that i'm like wait wait i need to step careful careful and i like land my just like hey what's going on there stepping over who knows how high off of the ground because they just live in that place they're present they're here hey what's going on oh that's fun because they let go of the fear and now it could be the children trust the adults in their lives and i think what it means that i would trust the wisdom in my life and the magic of the universe which is what i would like to look at as a child as that is the adult in my life, the magic of the universe and the wisdom and God, if you'd like to call it, that's what's, that's my adult in my life that I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to do something silly right now, but I know that I can trust you. Right. I it just, it's interesting because when I was looking up this, when I was researching and, and doing all my little homework and I came across, I said like, you know, who are people that have just taken the plunge and come up with, uh, and and just, you know, just taking the plunge blindly. And these are people that have done that. Sidney Banks, he was a, I forgot what the word was, but he was, he was working with wood. And one day he just had this insight and he said, I'm leaving, I'm gone. And his boss was like, are you sure? What are you doing? You're ridiculous. You're not gonna have an income. You just have this, you know, idea that you want to spread across the world. It was, it was almost like he didn't have a choice. Going into the unknown was just, when you know, you do it scared. That's been my experience. When I know, just like this webinar, I, it was like, I need to discuss this. I don't know why. I'm scared. I don't want to show up. This is, what am I doing? And you just show up scared. And I think that's what Sydney Banks did. Oprah Winfrey, she grew up in poverty. She grew up, she was fired from her jobs because she was too emotional and nobody liked her. Nobody wanted to hear from her. And she just kept going because she was following her wisdom and she was following and it didn't look right. On screen, it didn't look right. Everybody's like, go away, you're crazy. So is Sydney Banks and so is Steve Jobs who started up Apple, like these were all people that just, they went with it because they had a knowing it was scary. And if not for these people, 
I know if not for Cindy Banks and even Oprah Winfrey and Steve Jobs, these are people that have definitely influenced my life as it is today. These are people whose works and whose wisdom and whose contributions to society have definitely, whether if it's even just being an icon for inspiration, for following your heart, for doing what sets your heart on fire, that is amazing. And it's scary. But when you know, you know, and there's no Letting fear stop us is just, um, it doesn't stop. Fear won't stop when you know, to be honest, in my own experience, I've been afraid of things and fear has stopped me. And I believe that that fear is what other, other mentors would call a love letter. That fear is, is my mind and body telling me, okay, you're not ready yet. And when I'm afraid, I say what I'm doing is I'm just going to the waiting place because when I know, I know. And it gives that space for that fear to just be instead of being like, no, I'm not afraid and I'm going to push right through it. What generally ends up happening is that I give this fear a space to be. And then it's like, oh, okay, I can be afraid. And then it kind of just goes away on its own. And I know when I'm ready because I gave that space. And I just saw it. I didn't just be like, I'm not afraid and plunge through. No, I let it be. You're afraid? Cool. That's all right. Come, I'll give you a little hug. It's okay. Sit on the side. Don't make too much noise. And then it actually pulls us together because it's like, oh, okay. She's not ignoring me. So I don't have to scream so loud. It's only when we are like, I'm not afraid that the fear just comes and is like, you're afraid. Uh -huh. Fear, fear, fear. Right. So when we actually just acknowledge it, let it be, give it space, when it's time to take the plunge, I believe that we do take, do and will take the plunge. So, what does it mean to unleash our limitless potential? We've been talking a lot about the unknown, we've been talking a lot about a fear, we've been talking a lot about possibility. What does it actually mean to unleash my potential? What does that look like? Just, just try to imagine in your head, what does that look like? What does my unleashed, unlimited potential look like? How big is that? How expansive? How huge? And coming from a place of pure wisdom, coming from a place of inner heart, of warmth, of love, coming from a place of, it's not about my potential, it's about my soul's potential. It's about taking a gift that I've been granted in this world and making it huge so that other people can enjoy my gift. What does that look like? And what does that feel like? And the way to tap into that is honestly through being here and now with all we have, whether it's fair, whether it's whatever it is, tapping into my limitless potential happens in the present moment. My limitless potential is unfolding in me and in you right now, it's here. When we come to enjoy the present moment, when we come to live in the present moment, when we come to be, just be, we come, we are tapped in to that potential. We're tapped into that light, to that love, to that connection. 
And that's how we just go. That's how we go. That's how we run. That's how we live. Creating a state of mind that's open, curious, non judgmental, mindful, embracing myself with love, self acceptance is where all that goodness is at. Stay curious. Stay curious. Don't get caught in all the knowing. We know nothing. We know nothing. We're like children. Look at a baby on the floor who just got a little teether. All they do is stick it into their mouth and drool all over it. Life is our teething ring. The universe is our teething ring to explore, to discover, to unfold. There's so many things we can do and such a huge life to live. I've said this before and I, I will say it again. Approaching the unknown with curiosity. An open mind. Get curious about life. Get curious about your potential. Get curious about what amazing things can happen when I'm right here right now. Just being open. I remember there was one day I was uh, on a trip and I was like, I, I, I was just learning what it meant to listen to my heart. I was just, just learning and I didn't know. And I, I used to think that listening to my heart meant listening to my fear because it was this rushy, noisy thing, right? It was like, I'm afraid. Oh, you better do this. Oh, you better do this. And it was so much, it was, it was, and I believed it was my heart telling me and it probably was to be fear. It was all I had at the moment, at the time. And I, I remember, I, I actually took it on myself to go and learn to listen to my heart. This is what I am going to do. And I stepped out into the day and I said like, I, I said a, a little prayer. Like I said before I started this, this uh, webinar, I said a little prayer, just allow me to be a vessel for whatever, whoever needs to be met and for whatever needs to be said, allow me to, allow it to pass through me. And I went about my day really just tapping in when I didn't know if it was to go right or left. I just waited. I stood and I waited. And then I just knew. It's It starts with that, right? Like I started off, I said, like, I didn't know what to, what to do with my life. It doesn't start with like, oh, what should I do with my life? Let's start a huge company, international that I think for me, that's coming from fear. That's not wisdom. For me, the wisdom is, should I go right or should I go left right now? All right, it's pulling left. And you go left. And then you get to the left and you see somebody sitting on a bench and you kind of just pull yourself back in. Do I approach that person? Do I not? Oh, I do. Cool. Hey, I see you sitting alone. How are you doing? Smile, smile. All right, I guess that's the end of this encounter. And that was what it looked like. It was so gentle, so loving, so intuitive. It was intuitive. Following the unknown when I was tapped in and when I tried to be tapped in is really intuitive. And it's fun. Learning to you trust. You can actually myself. tell the story about learning. Yes, interestingly, thank you, Ilya. Actually, just yesterday, uh, Saturday, Saturday, we uh, we were coming out of the gym, Ilya and I, and um, thank you for bringing that up. That's a great story. And I see this guy wandering, or the gym is in a hotel, and I see this guy just wandering around, like with a big backpack on, dreads. And I see him coming out, and he comes out to his bike, and I see a bike that's loaded loaded with like a tent and bags and stuff and so I just said to him I was like hey where are you coming from and he says to me Tel Aviv Tel Aviv is about an hour ride away by bike I said no 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 where are you coming from you're not actually just coming from Tel Aviv because if you were coming from Tel Aviv you wouldn't have a bike uh you wouldn't have a tent and like a huge duffel he's like oh I come from New Zealand 
And he starts telling us how he was here for a month and a half trip. And um, it was just, he, and he was stuck. He had nowhere to go. He had no place to be. He had no place to sleep. And we were just like, okay, how can we help you? He's like, I want to go home, but I don't know how to use a phone. Anyways, from here to there, we wound up helping him. We, we changed his flight and we're kind of just hustling with him outside. We weren't telling him that we lived right nearby just yet. We weren't exactly willing and ready to let a stranger into our home. And slowly as the time went by, we, we kind of sensed it was like, again, before letting anybody into my home or into my space, I do wait to hear for that sign, right? I wait for that intuition for that it's okay. And if it comes from a place of, oh yeah, 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 it's okay. Generally, I can assume that's not my intuition. My intuition is coming from a place of very gentle, very quiet, very subtle, no rush, no pressure. It's okay. Anyways, so we started chatting with uh, with this guy. His, it turns out his name is Warren. And he, he gave me such huge inspiration. He actually stepped into the unknown. He he didn't play. He came to Israel in, uh, in in order to travel on his bicycle through Israel, but he didn't plan it properly. So he ended up just driving on highways with cars honking on him and like telling him, "You're crazy. Why are you doing?" He actually stepped into the unknown, and he regretted about it. Actually, so it's not always like a beautiful, amazing journey. Uh, that 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 it is actually it is beautiful amazing journey even if it's less pleasant but that uh, for me it was something very interesting to observe from from I could have these apples. from being in this experience or and 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 seeing heavy actually just taking interest in the person that just she saw someone with the bag and just came and approached him and just said how are you can can you tell me your story oh. and it came to be that it, this person actually needed help and we were lucky to be there and actually aid him to change his flight instead of like uh being stuck here for a month and a half so we were able to change his flight for uh, the the following couple of days to arrange him uh, a tour in Jerusalem, to actually help him to go through all his adventures that he didn't plan to help him plan him. So I, I don't know if he stepped to the unknown in, in the way that he wanted, but I'm sure that he came with a certain journey from it. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely, I personally, like I, I, I see people and I, do, I get curious. I see people, especially when they have a bag on them, I get curious. I, people with bags are like, what's your story? I know there's a story. And because I do believe that there's so much to learn from everyone, I just, I saw him and I was like, he's got a good story. And I am, I am a sucker for a good story. Like if you are going to give me a good story, I will sit for five hours and just listen. And just listening to him, he took a different route in life and we were just chatting with him and it was just it was so incredible to just see somebody he doesn't have internet he lives without internet he lives on a boat and I was just like oh my gosh when you let go of what life should look like it is absolutely incredible it's so, he's like, when he just said, I live on a boat for the past 12 years, and I'm like, people do that? It's just because we think we know. It's like, you know, you have to live in a house, and you have to have a roof over your head, and you have to have a bedroom, and you have to have a shower. I was like, how do you shower in a bucket? What are you doing, Rivka? Well, you, you, um, yeah, but what are you doing the whole time? Rina? Rina? Uh, there we go. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. 
Um, I just, it's just so, so incredible when we meet people that just don't, don't actually, they follow their heart. They follow their heart. It's not necessarily what I know. And I just, it's not necessarily what this world was, the rules of the world. I don't follow, when we don't follow the rules of the world, and we kind of just notice that our life is following the rules of the world, maybe stop for a second. Is that what I want to be doing? Is that where I want to be going? I really got this like huge eye opener from, from this guy Warren that we had met. Cause I was just like, oh my gosh, there is so much more to life than I believe there is. There is so much more when I let go of fear, when I let go of trying to control. And when I just let my intuition and my wisdom guide me, I have access to so much more. And by learning to trust my intuition and trust my guidance, I really, really have access to this hugeness and vastness of life. And it's available to all of us. It's available to every single one of us. Learning to trust the universe and its divine timing. I love this quote that I put up here. When we trust the universe and let go of our need of control, we can experience peace and serenity in the unknown. Because that really, really is what ends up happening. It really, really, when I am able to sit back, relax, even just notice, just notice what's holding me back. If it's a thought, if it's a feeling, which usually goes hand in hand, just notice what it is that's, let it have the space. I'm not coming and being like, no, no, no. Give it the space. Let it be. But by just noticing it, I'm already taking away its power over me. By just noticing what's holding me back and just noticing the, those patterns, whether it's a habit, right? The, the, the start of all change is noticing that we want to be changing something, is noticing that there is something that we don't want. And when I just let it be and let it unfold and let it come and let it go on its own, we tap into our magic. We tap into our wisdom. We tap into our inner guide. And that's where, that's where life just gets, I would say good, but I'm going to say wild. <laughs> that's where life gets wild. <laughs> I'm going to start wrapping things up. I'm going to leave a couple of minutes for questions. Um, sum things up of what we have pretty much just discussed is we're just going to take it step by step. The unknown is a natural and essential part of life. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next five minutes hold. To be fair and to be honest, I didn't know what this webinar was going to be. Right? We do not know. It is a part of life. It, there's no way to get out of it. There's no way to, so we might as well embrace it, open ourselves up, see what comes up. The unknown exists, it's here, it's now. So just open the door, open the door. Let it be, embrace it. Amazing things happen when we embrace opportunity, when we embrace even things that we're afraid of. We gain a deeper sense of purpose and meaning. We learn to trust our inner guidance with openness and curiosity. And finally, we let go of our limitations and tap into our boundless potential that lies within. I thank you. And I wish you a continued journey of adventure, curiosity, stay open-minded, and connected and joy and happiness. And I thank you all for joining me. If there's anybody that has questions, you're more than welcome to 
ask questions, comments, or whatever. I invite you to uh, open the mics and we can just have a discussion or if something came up, I'd love to hear. I'm going to stop share. Yeah, I, I think that most <laughs> of the things in our life uh, is the unknown. Basically, the, we, we know very limited reality that we live in that is uh, shaped by, by uh, our close environment. And most of the life that they are, there it's mostly unknown. So even doing something differently, like brushing your teeth with the opposite hand can cause a chain of events in, in, in the day that you could not even imagine. But just even doing something differently, uh, like you said, something unknown, something irregular, something uh, differently can open a chain of events that you won't necessarily understand how you came to that point, but even by changing a small thing on during the day, I think, it can cause a new chain of event, and not necessarily it would be the greatest one, but it would be an adventure, I think. No. Hey, Revi, I thought it was amazing. Thank you, and... Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Thank you, Julia. And I hope we're gonna have a another chat soon. Um, and uh, I was wondering if you could next time, uh, perhaps expand on. On uh, you know when you say, um, hang on, I've just lost it. When you say, um, oh sorry, Heavy, I've just lost it. I I have to come back to you. Um, just give me two minutes. Yeah, yeah. go back to your class. <laughs> I just lost yeah, it. No worries. No worries. <laughs> I'm just, Um. Okay, I'll come back to you in two minutes. Just one second. Yeah. No worries. I'm even going to take this a step further. I was recently just reading. I don't know where it was. It was either on Facebook or maybe it was a podcast. I don't remember who it was, but somebody was saying it was the enlightened gardener. I don't remember, but how even time and space is made up for us to make sense of our world. Time and space is a concept that has been made up Somebody decided there's a before, after, and future just so that we can make sense of our world. It, it blew my mind because it was like, what is beyond that? What is beyond that? Those words that don't do it justice of this concept of time. It's a word called time. But what is beyond because really time is a made up concept. Somebody made it up so we can make sense of our world. And it was just, it, it's just a little food for thought. Like it, it, when I read that, it just blew my mind. Cause I was like, wait a second. It almost, it shook up my foundation. It was just like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but really that, that was just that, that, that's what came up for me when I read that. And I was like, Hoop. I felt like somebody just stripped me of something that I really wanted to hold on to and know very steadily because it gives me some sort of security blanket <laughs> when I know stuff. Uh, but yeah. Sorry, oh yeah, it, it came back. <laughs> Amazing. It, it was about uh, the inner guidance. If you could expand, um, the two possibilities so when we listen to in which case we can listen to inner guidance and in which case we know it limits ourselves um i think first of all i do think that we are gifted with common sense hana always says there is common sense like our inner guidance does not tell us oh stick your hand in the fire and it won't burn Right? Like 
I, I do think there is a place that we can count on common sense to pull us into um, some sort of action and some sort of non-action. But when there is an inner guidance of should I do this, should I do, not do this, for me personally, but I think it looks different for everybody. For everybody, I don't think it's a universal um, feeling because I do think we're all in different places in our journey. And inner guidance for somebody can be, I've heard Joseph Bailey talking about inner guidance for somebody, for somebody can be actually a panic attack. It's their body stopping them from continuously causing themselves more harm. When your brain goes into panic attack, everything shuts down and the system's shut down. Your brain no longer goes into continuously hurting yourself. And that could be inner guidance. So I don't think that I can come and say that there is an inner guidance look or feel. Personally, in my own opinion, in my own experience, personal guidance looks calm. It looks happy. Not necessarily happy, happy, but it looks loving. It looks gentle. It doesn't give me a, any sort of discomfort. It almost feels like flowy. For me, personally, inner guidance feels very flowy. It feels like a knowing, like I'm going and I know. Um, I don't always listen to inner guidance. I'm going to be honest. Don't. I make mistakes. I'm human. <laughs> I listen to peers sometimes and I mess up and I'm like, how did I get here? Oh, right. That's how I got here. Um, but yeah, I hope that maybe... I guess for each each person, it's it's their own discovery journey. I think of learning how to understand their inner guidance. I've got to zoom off in a minute, in a moment, heavy. I I particularly liked some of the things some of the things you said about noticing. I think that that feels a really key thing. You you can't gauge where you where you are or what you're caught up with unless you're noticing a bit like stepping back um so that i, th I thought some of the, the things you shared about that were really good and apologies that i've got to now <laughs> we've now got to go to a business meeting <laughs> but it was Enjoy. lovely thank, thank you so much for joining thank you so much for joining <laughs> thank you good to see you Heavy, I'm I'm curious about something you said earlier on about the unknown, and I, I didn't write it down, so I'm not quite sure what it is. Sorry, I've got a flu at the moment. So my voice is a bit strange. Um, you said something like stepping into the unknown, but sometimes when we look at a situation and look at it in as if I don't know, you didn't say a different perspective, but from the unknown, it changes. I, I don't know. Do you remember? It was it was early on in the webinar that you, that you mentioned it. When I look at it with curiosity. Yeah, and I nearly felt that that what you said was looking at a current situation, and and this is my interpretation, of course. So I may be way off the mark, but something like when you look at a situation, a current situation from a place of not knowing, it looks different. Yeah. Yeah. Like the room, like the room when all of a sudden, yes, yes, yes. All of a sudden the room, <laughs> you. put a door in the room, everything changes. It's the same room. And to be honest, there is real, I, I didn't actually put a door in, but right now when you go into that room, it might look a little different. Nothing's changed. But we, I just gave you maybe a little bit of a different, I guided, I didn't give it to you, you had it, but I guided you maybe towards a different experience within that room. I and mean, then I realized that the ceiling of that room can be a skylight if I so desired. Or if there was a bed in that room, it can be a pool if I so desired. It's all up to me. Not me, but it's up to my curiosity in approaching the known as the unknown. What I believe is known, right? Michael Neal always says, the world is what you think it is, but they're the world beyond your thinking. 
So that room is what you think it is, but there's a room beyond what you think it is, just as the known, right? The known is what you think it is, but there is an unknown that you don't know what to think about. But we'd like to get curious about it, I think. It just helps with life, personally. Me. Right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that that's that's really interesting. That is really, really interesting. I never looked at it like that before. Thank you. Welcome. And what uh, what I heard from um from the room also it's um when once you add this uh, door and the possibility open to possibilities and you know be curious but from the room like you are in a kind of a stillness right we we make no no thought uh sp special we we sort of um come from a place of openness without preconceived judgment or whatever or on the situation just like the, the baby just like discover something new and it's like wow <laughs> there's no no fear nothing we we just like in that space uh, of emptiness which and that emptiness allow us to to create to bring new things to to make emerge new things as well and um I think it's that's from that stillness. I think that's what, how they say in English, right? Like from that stillness. There's no prejudgment that we can, uh, things can come. <laughs> if we that. have a head full of things, nothing can come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we look at our room, with we have everything we already need in it, right? which we do potentially, but we don't leave room for when, when it just is without, I have enough and I don't have enough without all of that noise. Like Estelle said, that stillness allows things to come and go. When we come without expectations and just with, Oh, right now it's a room. It might be a pool in a second. There might just appear to be a door. Everything can change. Everything can change at any given moment. But I think the biggest key here in knowing that I didn't, everything can change is that I have everything I need inside to deal with that change, to embrace that change, to love that change, and to live with peace and harmony within that change. Right? Everything changes, but my insides are whole and pure always. And I always will have, always did, and always will have everything I need to embrace it with a big, huge hug and curiosity. And I think that's really, when speaking change, I think for me personally, knowing that I have everything I need inside that's definitely given me the tiniest little boost to trust the magic of the universe. Because even if there is, God forbid, an earthquake, I still have everything I need. So I think that really allows me to not get as noisy about the thinking. Not all, all the what ifs. Although, but I, I'm going to embrace the change, but what if, and only if it's like this and this, and only, you have everything you need. All the what ifs can happen. All of them, all of them can happen. Every single one, okay? Now go, you still have everything you need. Did the what ifs help? Probably not, but it's okay. We won't go there. <laughs> you know, like, like, Knowing that I have everything I need at any given moment allows me to really take plunges, allows me to take the leap of faith. 
and knowing that the universe has my back when I don't think I got my own. <laughs> Even though I know I always got my own back. Beautiful. <laughs> it's really good. Cool. Yay. Thank you, Estelle. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy you enjoyed. Yeah. Actually, I feel like you're still kind of processing something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. It's so nice to to, to know um, ourselves, you know, to understand how how we create our experience of reality. Because when we don't, we don't let our fears or anxiety take over and limit us. And, um, you know, we, we step out of trying to control everything. Uh, and we, we, we start to, to feel lighter, less judgmental, um yeah open to possibility creative when we stop the noise in our head you know it's um it's uh it's it really is a uh, life-changing life-changing suddenly we can relax in our experience of the moment and um everything improves our relationships with ourselves relationships with others it comes from the inside out and when we create a space for ourselves we create a space for others and and I, I, you know i i would love that we expand on who is i the i who talks right now you know if i am not my my thoughts my, the noise in my head who I am I leave that to you that's, that's a whole other can of worms right there <laughs> that's, I don't think we can I, I don't know that I can do that in a minute and a half uh, but that, that is definitely um, material for maybe another webinar we can we can discuss that and we can go into that I love that who that would be beautiful I, yeah. Who am I is a great question. <laughs> and I don't know that there is one answer, but I think if I was to answer it in two seconds, it would be, I am you and you are I. Could that be something to do with pure source energy consciousness? Whoa. Maybe. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big, uh, it's, it's a big, it's a big pool to jump into. Yes, so I shall look forward to the next webinar. Yeah, I do love that question. <laughs> thank right. you, Revi. I, I thank you, Estelle. Get my thank daughter. You. I loved it so much, and it was so nice to see everyone as well. So cool, so you nice. You too. You too. Thanks, Angelina. Thank thank you, you. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, thank Harry. You. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.